This is your alarm on an ordinary vacation. Hello, ma'am. This is your wake-up call. <sighs> this is your alarm on a real vacation. Go on a real vacation. Go RV. Take the wheel at your nearest RV dealer or at GoRVing.com. Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. Dr. Jay Calvert here once again on a very, very beautiful Wednesday afternoon with my astute and informative co-host, Dr. Millicent Ravello. Good afternoon. How are, are you? Are you feeling astute? I'm feeling so astute right now. Fantastic. <laughs> You're looking great as we just filmed a little bit of a welcome to the practice video. We did. I have my hair coiffed and my makeup overly done. I feel a little pancake drag queen, but you know, it's <laughs> That's good. That's not a bad thing. It's good. <laughs> it works. It works for the camera. That's, yes, that was it good. It does work for the camera. That's the whole point. Yeah. I did not get coiffed, nor did I get any makeup, <laughs> and I just went with it because you girls were so busy down there between Jenny and Orla and you. There was there was enough makeup in there for everybody. I thought I just had to go, go with that. And you know what? It's fine. It's that age-old double standard, right? Yeah. I definitely... Yeah. There's not a lot of help that you can do here. <laughs> Good thing this is a podcast. I think you look fantastic. Well, thank you very much. So we are good to go. What we're going to talk about today is post-op rhinoplasty instructions for our patients. Yes. This is a big topic because for some reason, this surgery, more than many others that we do, provokes this anxiety in the patients over what are we supposed to do after surgery? It's so true. And the answer is not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. <laughs> just like, literally don't. not a whole lot. Just don't hit your nose and, and come back for your post-op follow Avoid the head of the bull mastiff <laughs> pet. Yeah. You can do that. Or, the, or the infant child. Now, the infant childs go for the cast. Oh. They go right for it. They just... Well, not even that. Their heads, especially those unstable heads. Oh, you know, you're yeah. holding yeah, your the, baby and all of a sudden snap. they just snap their head up and bonk. There goes your nose. Yeah, the head snap is, uh, that's been a problem for yeah. several mommies uh, yes. and, and some daddies. Yeah. I had a daddy yeah. take a head snap uh, on a uh, flight back from Las Vegas. <sighs> He's a, a rhinoplasty surgeon friend of mine who took a head snap to the nose, and we wound up in surgery that night for a closed reduction. Oh, So painful. if you can avoid trauma... You'll be oh, fine. I think other than that, change the gauze under the nose, sleep on 45, at 45 degrees with you know three or four pillows under your head, ice the cheeks down, don't put the ice on the nose. Uh, okay. That's, that's it. There you go. Podcast it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, just to be, but to be serious, well, the, these are the questions that I get. Yeah. The frequently asked questions are, do I need to put ice on the nose? No, you should not put, there's a cast on the nose, ice on the nose isn't good, then you probably won't feel it. You could potentially freeze the tip right. and give yourself frostbite, which would be a burn. That's bad. Um, so ice to the cheeks, ice to the foreheads. When it comes to, there's only one forehead, not four foreheads, heads, <laughs> unless you have multiple foreheads. Some people have five heads. Five heads. Yeah. So then yeah. They, they need to bring their hairline forward for that. We have an operation for that too. But the, the eyes should go on the forehead, since you only have one, and the cheeks, and that's perfect. You should change the gauze under the nose as it gets saturated. Right. We call uh, it a little mustache dressing. That's right. It's basically a little piece of gauze that goes under the nose, under the nostrils, taped up to your cheeks. And for the first 24, maybe 48 hours, you're going to have a little bit of drainage, some bleeding. Um, it's not a lot, but if it saturates the gauze or gets it dirty, just change it. No big deal. Um, if you're thinking about going into the vestibule, into the nostrils to take out clots or snots or snot clots, which is really what they are. That's fine. Just irrigate with some yeah. with some saline and don't go digging. Don't go digging. Because if you dig, you may get into the incisions. Right. So most of the time, you're going to have these splints inside your nose, which are these pieces of silicone that go into each nostril. They are open tubes, basically, so that air can pass through them so you can still breathe through them. But sometimes those openings get clogged with your snot clogs. So I typically do have my patients come back the next day or 48 hours at the latest, and I will clean for them and I'll take out you know the blood clots or whatever's clogging up the airway and then I'll say now you can do this yourself because fresh post-op I don't really want them digging in 